Hey guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all new 2024 Jeep Wrangler Sahara. And a big thanks to Mike at Furman Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram in Newport Ritchie, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV or truck in the Newport Ritchie, Tampa, Clearwater area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and that's for Mike. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Wrangler has been Jeep's compact and mid-sized four-wheel drive off-road SUV since 1986. That's when the first YJ generation was released. Fast forward to 2017, and Jeep released the fourth generation Wrangler that you see here named the JL. And for 2024, the Wrangler received a facelift both inside and out, featuring an updated grille, several new wheel designs, and all-new 12.3-inch touchscreen standard across all trims, replacing the previous 5- and 7-inch screens, now with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The integrated navigation system has access to over 2,000 trails and the ability to download additional ones. Finally, the 2024 Wrangler has finally added better noise cancellation technology, which we'll check out once we take this thing out for a drive. The 2024 Wrangler is available in 13 different trims, starting with the $32,000 Sport all the way up to the $88,000 Rubicon 392. Here, we have the Sahara sitting in the middle of the pack with a base price of $47,875. What else we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So, as mentioned earlier, we have an updated grille for this facelifted 2024 Wrangler. Still the LED headlamps for the high and low beam and an LED daytime running light. Additional light outside for the fender area and fog lights part of the bumper. And I like the color scheme for this bumper. Contrast this white paint very nicely. We get a forward facing camera with a washer here for the Sahara trim. The wheel and tire setup, we get like 13 or 14 new wheel designs for the 2024 Wrangler. And this is one of them with a old school Jeep center cap. Hopefully you pick it up on camera. The wheel and tire setup isn't as aggressive as a Wrangler or a Willys, but it's still beefy enough to take this car off road if needed. Here we have Bridgestone Dueler all-terrain tires, dimensions being 255-70 R18, and it's a square setup. We need a multiple piston front brake caliper and a single piston out rear. I like these aggressive fender wells too. Very bold, typical Jeep design. Trail rated 4x4 badge in the corner. Sahara Jeep Wrangler with an American flag right next to it. The doors, of course, are still removable. The rear windows are also removable. We have the sliding top. We don't have the actual removable top, but I actually prefer the sliding top, and I'll show you why once we take a step inside. We get smart access for the driver and a front passenger. I don't believe we get blind spot monitoring on the glass, but the glass is heated. Continuing along, I like the tints out rear and for the rear hatch area, the same rear wheel and tire setup as we mentioned. The gas cap opens right up. We don't get easy fill. I'm pretty sure you could throw 87 octane fuel for this two liter turbo, but I personally recommend sticking to premium fuel as I would with all turbo engines. We have LED tail lights, turn signals, and reverse lights. Shout out Furman Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram here in Newport Ritchie, Florida for helping make this review possible. Tinted rear hatch, backup camera, part of the fifth full-size spare tire. We don't get that Jeep center cap, but I'm sure we have it somewhere in the extra parts bin inside. Trailer hitch, I'll leave a link right here to show you what this Wrangler is rated to tow. We'll take a squat back here, get a good look at the exhaust tip. And speaking of the exhaust tip, let's fire up this two liter turbo and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the two liter turbocharged four cylinder sold by Jeep for the 2024 Wrangler Sahara. And it sounds okay, making a very healthy amount of power though. At 270 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque, made it to this eight speed automatic transmission, enough to get this about 4,200 pound four wheel drive off road SUV to 60 in about six seconds, maybe even quicker. I believe Car and Driver tested it at 5.9, making it a no joke performer. What well, you see is basically what we get. We don't get hydraulic hood struts and the hood latches down manually. It has an additional latch down in the center, but to actually close the hood, check this out. You gotta do this with both sides. It's a little bit tricky with one hand, but took a little bit longer than expected, but there we go. We'll take one more step back, get a good look at the front styling of this updated facelift, the 2024 Jeep Wrangler Sahara. And we also have an updated interior, speaking of that, Let's take a step inside and see what we got. So we'll turn these headlights back to auto so the car is not yelling at me. But we get soft touch material up top, pretty soft padded leather stitching down below, aluminum door handle, four way adjustable mirrors, lock and unlock, and a cargo net down below. Of course, the doors are removable. The seats are leather with orange contrast stitching. We get Sahara 
badging in the center of them and they're fully adjustable. Four-way lumbar control, you can recline, drop, lift, and slide the seats, taking a step inside, no running boards, but of course, you can get it as an option. Taking a step inside though, foot on the brake, engine start, stop, and everything fires right to life. But first thing we notice is the steering wheel. Not a whole lot has changed, but the steering feel feels very solid for a Wrangler. They've done a huge improvement over the last 10 years of the steering feel for these cars. The horn area is rubberized. I like the Jeep design in the center. The horn itself, loud and aggressive. People should be definitely getting out of your way. On the left side, we have our infotainment adjustments where we have driver assist, fuel economy, trip info, stop start, audio information, messages, screen setup, digital speedo, vehicle info, tire pressure monitoring. You also get coolant temp, trans temp, oil temp, oil pressure, oil life, and battery voltage. All very nice to have. We have off-road information too with a grade pitch and roll. And final screen right back to where we started with the driver's assist. Actually, the final screen would be the fuel economy. That's where we started. Anyway, on the left side, we have a tack that goes to about 6,000 RPM, 120 mile an hour speedometer. On the left side, coolant temperature. On the right side, fuel level. We might have to fill up pretty soon. Not a lot of gas in this Wrangler. The stocks have a pretty satisfying click to them. Auto headlamps, auto high beams, fog lights. We don't get auto rain sensing wipers, but the stock right here in the center. On the right side, radar cruise control, adjusted on the right side buttons, tilt and telescoping steering wheel, interior brightness, the air vents are outlined in aluminum with some leather stitching throughout the center. We have a stitched dashboard too. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera and an all new 12.3 inch touchscreen with integrated navigation standard across all trims. The home screen features navigation, music, up top clock, the seat information with the climate too, outside temperature, all available in the home screen. You can also add whatever widgets you would like to. Media, you can see the song is currently playing. You can adjust the climate through the touch screen if you'd like to. We also get hard buttons down below. The navigation screen, we can check it out. Really high resolution. The response is excellent. Basically, just like an iPhone, the phone screen, we don't have one connected right now, but you can let the potential owner of this vehicle adjust all of those settings. You can adjust the mirror dimmer electronically, forward facing camera and rear view camera you can access at all times with the click of a button. This is your forward facing camera. You can clean the camera and rear glass with just a click of a button. You press this button right here. Now you have a backup camera, all really high quality, very convenient features. The apps down below, you see everything that we have available pause, take a look. You also have comfort apps, navigation apps, and the phone apps. My personal favorite to look at all times would be the navigation screen, but since the home screen also integrates the navigation screen, we'll simply leave it right over there. Beneath that, we have two air vents. Volume dials are outlined in this like rubberized marine material. The vent controls in the center and the tune on the right side. We have heated front seats and a heated steering wheel. You can turn off the auto start stop for the purpose of this review. Traction control, you can also disable Hill Ascent Control, I guess it's just your trail mode. You turn the screen off, 12 volt, good spot for radar detector, and the window controls part of the center stack. You can open up this media cover and you have the aux, USB-C, and USB-A port and four auxiliary modes right down below. Hopefully you can pick them up on camera. A little bit of additional storage, you can maybe fit a phone in there. The gear selector controls the eight-speed automatic transmission. We can take a quick look at the backup camera. We get a very high resolution screen, as you mentioned before, with guidance lines and trajectory. No 360 here on the Sahara trim. I believe it might be optional, but the top trims do get 360. Throw right back in the park, you have your four wheel drive control, two high, four high, and four low. No four wheel drive auto here on the Sahara. We have a real genuine e brake that's nice for an off road vehicle. Two cup holders with pushy things to fit the drinks or to keep the drinks in place. You'll fit 24, maybe 30 ounce bottles and a nice pass through, good spot for a phone. If we didn't mention, we also have a Gladiator and a Wrangler etched underneath the sliding controls. The center console armrest is very well padded with some more of that gold brown contrast stitching, a two tier glove box. You throw business cards, pens, coins in this first tier. And the second tier is very large. You'll fit a six pack of 12 ounce cans and an additional USB A port. The glove box, it is damped tiny, not lined with felt. You'll probably not fit any license plates in here because it's simply not wide enough, but you should be able to fit a pair of shoes in there with no problem. We have an oak crab handle if the driver off-roading is driving a complete maniac, frameless auto dimming rear view mirror, and we have this auto opening sliding roof. This is one of the coolest features available on the Wrangler. I think it's a must have if you actually plan on using the opening roof. It's about a $3,700 package, but it really transforms the interior 
of this off-road SUV. You can also remove those rear windows out back and remove the doors and have basically a complete open air experience. We can pop our way out of here. Pretty nice day in Newport Ritchie, Florida. It's 91 degrees, but the rain seems to be holding off for a couple hours. Pretty nice of it to do so for this review. We can shut this roof right up. There's no like net, so you don't have the glass roof, of course, because of the way that it folds in, but it's still a really convenient feature to be able to do this with your 2024 Wrangler Sahara. That's about it though, guys, for the front seat. Let's take a quick look at this window sticker, see any features I may have missed on this 2024 Wrangler four-door Sahara 4x4 with a $47,825 base price. You can see all the standard features, options, starting with these $1,995 McKinley trim power seats, giving you the four-way power lumbar adjustable front passenger seat, eight-way power adjustable driver's seat, an eight-way power adjustable front passenger seat, and a four-way power lumbar adjustable driver's seat. Cool. That's a mouthful. I don't really understand the order they put those things in, but more power to them for $1,195 you get the trailer tow and heavy duty electrical group package giving you the auxiliary switches receiver hitch seven and four pin wiring harness for 2295 you get the tech group giving us the alpine premium audio system and it sounds really good especially with these speakers bumping right next to your head you get the hd radio gps navigation so the gps navigation is not a standard feature but the 12.3 inch touchscreen is I'm sorry about that guys we have to connect the travel and traffic services you connect five nav with a 12.3 inch touchscreen display integrated voice command integrated off-road camera sky one touch power roof as part of a 3795 dollar package but it gives us the removable rear quarter windows rear window defroster rear window wiper and washer power top quarter window storage back too and for 1095 bucks we get these 18 by seven and a half inch aluminum wheels at the $1,795 destination charge, we're sitting a tick under $60,000. So yeah, we're up there on price, but this is a loaded vehicle, averaging 20 MPGs, 20 in the city, 20 on the highway. That's about it though, guys, for the front seat. Let's hop out back, see how much space is offered back there, as well as the overall quality of the materials, and then take this car out for a drive. So up top, we still get the soft touch materials, well-padded leather stitched armrest, a little bit of storage, Part of the armrest and some storage for this cargo net. We get an aluminum door handle. The rear seats are still these McKinley leather seats. They're not adjustable out rear, wouldn't be expected. But you can recline them, that's also appreciated. The legroom looks very solid, especially for a Wrangler. Taking a step inside, I'm a little bit over six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings, and I still have about four inches of knee room. Definitely can't complain. Headroom, very spacious. I got at least like two, three inches of it. We get rear air vents. The window controls we don't get heated rear seats of course we get two usb a and two usb c ports and a power ac outlet for the back seat too plenty of storage we get two cargo nets behind both of the front seats the center armrest you can pull the string and the whole thing comes down with the headrest the headrest is what includes your two cup holders pass through to keep your phone in place and you can throw some car accessories keys in there with a very well padded leather armrest itself you can put this thing right back the two speakers will bump directly into your face. Very impressive with this Alpine sound system. It really maximizes the way this vehicle produces its audio. We have an oh crap handle back here too. That's about it though guys for the back seat. Let's hop out into the cargo space real quick. See how much space is offered back there and then take this car out for a drive. So you simply open up this bottom part of the trunk. It's labeled Jeep and it says trail ready in the corner. The big I guess plaque made in the USA, Auburn Hills, Michigan, Toledo, Ohio assembly since 1941 for the military concepts, 1986 for the Jeep owned Wrangler. But anyway, the cargo space, you can open up this rear glass too. You have to open up the bottom latch first. So it's not like some of the other vehicles in the segment like the Bronco Sport, we can simply open up the rear window separately. Anyway though, the cargo space is solid. That subwoofer does take up a little bit of space, but you'll still be able to fit probably a 60 inch tv back here if you fold the rear seats down we get a little bit of secret storage down below too you'll probably fit a backpack maybe a small carry-on that's about it though we get the roll cage too so if you remove the rear windows and retract the roof and remove all the doors that roll cage with the body color looks super cool we can drop this glass right down shut the trunk it's a pretty easy process but in the city if you're parallel parked you might want to be careful with that rear latch, trunk, whatever you like to call it, because you may bump into the car parallel parked behind you. That's about it though, guys, for the inside and outside of this 2024 Jeep Wrangler Sahara 4x4. It is a really nice vehicle, and with this two liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine, 
Zero to 60 should be at around six seconds, if not quicker, making it a no joke performer. And speaking of no joke performer, let's take this Beast 2024 Wrangler Sahara out for a drive and see what it's got. All right guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new 2024 facelift, the Jeep Wrangler Sahara. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. My first impressions though, the steering feels so much better than it used to. Let's hit this steep incline. I mean, it is a Jeep, it's what it's meant to do. Boom, like nothing. We're just in two wheel drive too and it gets over just about anything. And we don't even have the super beefy off-road tires here, but here, handles this rougher terrain with absolutely no problem. All right guys, taking a step out here on this regular pavement, about half throttle, good power. Ooh, yeah, that thing is moving. You still hear a little bit of wind noise. I know I said they added some sound deadening technology, but you can, it's still not a quiet vehicle. It's a little bit quieter than before just not as quiet as I was expecting. The steering feels way better than it used to. And it's pretty easy to maintain speed with this turbocharged engine. Yeah, at higher speeds, it doesn't feel as planted as it is at lower speeds. But that's always been the case with these Wranglers. The body roll, let's check it out. Throwing it a little faster than we should. That is a huge improvement compared to the older Wranglers. It actually feels miles ahead when it comes to the actual planted feeling. Just cruising along at lower speeds. It's a pretty windy day today and we still hear a little bit of wind noise. Um, that rattle you hear, that's my water bottle smacking against the window sticker. That's not the car itself. But the road noise, very quiet with these less aggressive tires. And at lower speeds, the car stays in a straight line very well. Very slight steering changes. Does make the vehicle change direction. It may take a little bit longer compared to a sports car. But I mean, you don't buy this vehicle because you expect it to be very sporty. All right, guys, taking a step out here, we can lean into it a little bit more. Woo! Yeah, this thing can move. We got some twisties coming up. We'll push it a little bit further than we have so far. Yeah, it stays in a straight line pretty well. You can turn the wheel a little bit at higher speeds and not have anything change at all. But the steering feels good when you turn it in and good torque coming out. We don't have to push it a whole lot further. We don't have a lot of gas left in this car. Just wanna show you guys what it's got. And on the concrete pavement, the road noise is still very quiet. The wind noise you hear a little bit, but at lower speeds like this, you don't, you don't hear it much. The brakes feel good, very good. And then sharper twisty, the steering also feels very good. The throttle, nice, powerful and responsive. Good low and mid-range torque, slowing down again, twisty, body roll is limited. Yeah guys, this thing is very good. Compared to 10, 15 years ago, this vehicle has come miles ahead. Compared to a Ford Bronco, no, I don't think this handles quite as good as a Ford Bronco, but it's very close. Compared to how it was when the Bronco just came out, this vehicle is miles ahead. One more twisty coming up, brakes feel good. Steering feels good, and the gas pedal also feels good. This is like a third throttle. We're picking up speed really quickly. I'm not sure if this is faster than the V6, but I would like to see a race between the two because this four-cylinder feels really powerful. One more time, twisty. Woo! Yeah, the body roll stays really limited, guys. And this is what I believe is the last twisty on this road, but wow. <laughs> at that speed i did not expect the body roll to be that limited in a jeep wrangler overall if you're looking for an off-road suv but you don't plan on actually taking it off-road more than like once twice maybe three times per year so you don't want the super aggressive tires you're okay with the skinnier tires because it allows you to get an additional two maybe three miles per gallon you're quicker off the line with the skinnier tires and the road noise is a lot more limited so if that's what you're looking for, but you still want the luxury and features and tech, definitely check out the Sahara. It's still off-road capable with the 4x4. No, it doesn't have the, the lockers like you get on the Rubicon. It doesn't have those super beefy tires that you get on the Rubicon or even the Willys trim, but it's still a pretty aggressive vehicle. And with this two liter turbo engine, it is quick. If you're looking for a off-road SUV, the luxury and features and tech with still a little bit of performance behind it i would definitely recommend checking out the 2024 jeep wrangler sahara 
And a big thanks to Mike here at Furman Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram in Newport Ritchie, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to our inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa, Newport Ritchie, Clearwater area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Mike. And huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you. And I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.